Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So this is part two of building a crypto tracker application using Python. So if, in case you haven't already watched part one, I re really recommend you do, because this is going to be a series where we continue where we left off in part one. So in part one, we basically uh, got to a point where we created all the functions that are going to retrieve the data from our API for us. API we're using in this instance is the Gecko, uh, CoinGecko API. And um, we basically created three simple functions. One that will basically get a list of all the cryptos available on the market. Um, one that would get um, <clears throat> crypto data relating to the IDs that we provide in a list. Uh, and lastly, another one that would um, provide us with historical data uh, for the crypto IDs that we would provide in a list. So those are the three functions that we coded up in the last tutorial, and they're basically all related to grabbing uh, data from our API. So let me quickly run this off. Um, and then what we're going to basically start doing is uh, we're going to try and build out the UI and all the widgets in this tutorial. So um, just to give you guys a quick reminder of what the app looks like, when you start it up, you have this loading um, sort of pop-up that shows up until all of the coins have loaded up. So basically all the available coins in the market. And then, um, you know, you have this uh, search function where you can type in things like Bitcoin, and then it will just filter down to that keyword. Then for example, you can um, click on Bitcoin 2.0, click on select, and you know, that becomes part of the selected ones. And that's obviously saved. You can delete it and uh, you can also click on track cryptos and that will basically track whatever's selected right here so that's what the ui for that looks like so that's the final outcome of um, tracking all the selected cryptos cool so we're going to try and build out some of these ui elements in today's tutorial so first things first what we're going to have to do is uh, try and build out the graphics for the loading pop-up that shows up so to make things simple we're just going to create a class and we're going to call that loading pop-up uh, we're going to start the initializer Pass and self, root, and a message that would be displayed every time we have the loading pop up. Now we uh, assign a few attributes on initialization. We'll do top equals tk dot pop level because it's going to basically be a new window that pops up off the um, master window that we create. We'll set a title for it. We'll call this loading. Uh, so dot top dot geometry will set a fixed size for it so we'll say 300 uh, by 100 um, and then the label that will be displayed on it will basically be our message so we'll do tk.label uh, tk.label self.top is where we're going to place it and then the text is simply going to be the message uh, that we initialize this class with which comes from up here now, if you guys are not familiar with Tikinta and classes and stuff, I'll also link a few tutorials on that in the description. So feel free to check those out too. So now that we have the label, we actually need to place it somewhere on the screen. So for this one, we'll simply do self.label.pack, uh, which will put it to the center of the screen. And we'll set pad, pad y to 10, which means it will add a bit of um, padding on the y axis. So from the top and bottom. Now that we have that, let's actually create the progress bar um, that will show the progress in our case. So self.progress will create a new variable or attribute to this class is equal to. And this is where we use TTK, which was what we imported to create um, tables uh, as well as the progress bar up here. So we're going to use TTK uh, dot progress bar and then we'll place it on self.top obviously. The orient is going to be horizontal because we want the progress bar to go from left to right and not from top to bottom. Uh, and then we do mode equals in determinant. Uh, and then length is basically how, I guess, how wide we want it to be. Um, we put that in. And then we need to place that progress bar somewhere on the screen. So let's do self.progress.pack. Once again, place it right under the label. And we set padding y to 10 for that as well. Now, once you've basically um, got the progress bar and then placed it on the screen, you need to actually start the animation. So to do that, you just do self.progress.start. And that will basically start the animation um, for the progress bar. Now, um, obviously, you want this progress bar 
uh, or pop up to be on your screen but once everything's finished loading you want that pop up to disappear so we'll create a uh, a method inside this class called destroy which will basically just destroy the instance of this window once the data is loaded so we're going to do self.progress.stop which will basically stop the ongoing animation that we previously started and then self.top.destroy which will basically destroy the entire pop-up window to test this class out let's just do um test loading equals initialize the class and then obviously uh we're going to need the we're going to need to provide a um a master equals pk dot uh second let me double check that tk dot tk uh we're going to have to pass in the the root which is going to be master and then the message will just say hello uh if we run this obviously not much happens uh and that's probably because we need to start the main loop and once we do start the main loop what you start to see is that we have a window and it's obviously infinite right now because all we're doing is we're just saying hello and the animation continuously runs um in in obviously different instances what we would want to happen is it would be something like loading your data please wait dot 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 and then you know um this pop-up window will just stay on the screen uh until the destroy function is basically called whenever the data is successfully loaded in cool so that's our loading pop-up class finished um what we're gonna do next is actually start coding up the actual um crypto tracker app class so to keep things simple once again and to have all the variables easily accessible we're gonna build this whole app in a class so crypto tracker app is the class we're gonna give it the initializer won't really help uh, many uh, arguments in it, just a root. Um, we assign self.roots to root, and then we'll just assign a title for that window. So title is going to be crypto currency tracker. Cool. Now, um, obviously, in the initializer, you need to run any functions that need to be run straight away on the class being initialized. So what we're going to have to do in here is um basically once the application starts you want the data for all the available cryptos to be scraped from the api so that it can then be rendered on the screen so that's going to be one of the things that need to be uh need to be started as a separate thread and then we also need our default window to show up so what do i mean by that so as you can see this is our default window and then um oh this is lagging a bit but that loading window that usually pops up that's our thread that starts separately um so that the application doesn't lag while the data is being collected so what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna do self dot create widgets and that's gonna be a function that basically renders out the whole application um, excluding the bit where you you know click track and stuff so the basic application which is not going to be filled in with a lot of data um, and then this function will obviously be created in a second so that's the first thing that will happen and then we're also going to create a variable called um, crypto list and then that's just going to be for now set to an empty data frame now this data frame will be populated once we scrape the data related to all the available cryptos using the um, get crypto list function that we earlier coded so that's going to be the two things two, two things that happen and then um, another thing that will also happen is we're going to run the um, we need to basically start loading the data from the api in a separate thread so that's what we're going to be doing as well uh, so to do that we're just going to do threading thread assign a target and that's just going to be wherever um, function loads up that data so we'll create a function in a second called load crypto data we click and then we assign that to start so basically what this will go ahead and do for us is um it will open up a new thread that will run this load crypto data function for us um, obviously that's going to be separate to the create widgets so that we have a main screen already ready even when the data is downloading so 
to do, uh, let's first of all um, try and create the load crypto data function so that we have updates. So do def load crypto data and as an argument we pass in self. Then um, obviously what we want to happen when we're doing this is that the pop-up uh, that we seen earlier that shows the loading um, screen or the progress bar shows up first. So we'll create a new variable called loading pop-up assign that to loading pop-up which is our class that we created a second ago first argument going to be the self.roots because that's where we want it to be and then second argument just a message so loading uh crypto currency data or you can change the message to whatever you prefer now obviously once this is done what we're going to do uh well it's not going to be done but um while that's on the screen, what we're going to be doing is assigning that crypto list variable, the empty data frame, to uh, the data that's retrieved uh, from the get crypto list function. So what this will return is basically um, a, uh, a an array that is pretty much uh, you can turn into a data frame. So let me show you what that looks like. So get crypto list run that so it returns a list which has pretty much uh, dictionaries in it one with the id symbol and name for each coin and obviously if you pass this to pd.dataframe it will basically make a nice data frame out of it or a table out of it um, in this instance that looks somewhat like this so that's what we're going to get to um, over here so we're basically assigning that data frame um, to the crypto list variable so that it is then saved um, to this variable and accessible for the class so we'll do pd.dataframe and then we'll assign that to um, get crypto list function so that's basically going to populate that uh, variable now once that's done um, what we want to obviously do uh, is we want to lastly destroy that loading pop-up because you know the data is now ready but we'll do destroy but before that actually happens um we need to update the ui with all the results that we just collected in the crypto list right so to update the ui we'll just uh create a different function and it will make a lot more sense why later so we'll do self.update search results um, and basically what this uh, function is responsible to do is to take whatever results are in the crypto list data frame and to display them on the GUI. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and then just one more thing that we need to do uh, is... Uh, so okay, actually, for now, that's basically basically all we need to do in this function. But later on, we're going to have to come come back and add a line, I think. So what we need to do next is actually get into the create widgets function because that's another function that we said we would code. So def create widgets and itself. So what this is gonna do is while the crypto data is loading and whatever, um, it's going to create all of the widgets that go on our main application that load up in the meantime. So uh, first thing to us, we're going to create a label and then uh, that label is going to be placed on self.root. Text for that label is going to be search cryptos to track and we're going to use the dot grid method to basically place it on the first row, first column, give it a padding x of 5 and a padding y of 5. So a padding from the left right and a padding from top bottom. Then what we're going to do next is uh, actually create a um, like a search bar right underneath it. So we'll do self dot search bar equal to uh, is equal to pk dot entry and then self dot root uh, and then set a width of fifty. Now. What I need to sh what what I want to show you guys is uh, something we called a string variable in Tekinta. So we'll create a new variable called search bar or search variable. We'll assign that to tk.string variable. 
Um, now what this does is it basically creates a new attribute to this uh, this class, obviously, and then it assigns it to ticket.stringWell, which is a type of data type. Now with this, what you can do is then when you're creating the entry, you can type in an argument called text variable and then assign that to self.searchbar. Now what that will do is every time you type in something into the um, text box or the entry, it's just going to update whatever you type in that entry straight into this variable. So you um, don't have to have like a separate button that you click to, you know, retrieve that value and then run a search function. It will just automatically be in real time. So if you type in A in this entry, this will be updated to the value A. Cool. So now that that's clear, we'll actually need to place it somewhere on our screen. So we'll do self.searchbar.grid and then we'll do row equals one, column equals zero, tab x equals five, tab y equals five. Obviously, I'm typing these up quickly because I have a reference for these and I know where they're going to go in the application. So feel free to take a second and try and figure out where you want to place yours uh, if you want to have like a different design to mine. So once we're done with this, uh, the only thing left to do is to actually um, code up like a um, like an event and attach it to this search bar. So every time someone types in something into the search bar, every time they release the key, we want, want, we want to update the results so that they only contain what the user is searching for. So to do that, we'll do self.searchbar and then we'll bind it to the event of key release. So this means that every time I release my key uh, of the keyboard on the search bar, I can run a specific function. Now the function I'm going to decide to run is, I'm going to pass in a, uh, an argument here and the function I'm going to run is the self.update search results. Now if you remember we used that over here as well but we haven't really coded it up yet. But all it's going to do is it's going to uh, take the data that is available in the crypto list uh, array and then filter that data down to whatever's up in the search variable and then display that data in the UI. So it's similar to what we do in the first instance as well, because um, initially when we load the data, this is going to be empty. And given that it's, going, it's, it's empty, it's going to match all the results. So it's not going to filter anything out. But as soon as you type something in, it's going to filter it down to whatever you've typed in and then update the results. So it's basically a multiple use sort of function. So once that's done, um, that will pretty much handle the... Um, the creation of the search bar and the label. Uh, what we can do now is I'm just going to create a prop function down here called update search results. Uh, so, and then I'll do pass. Um, and then we can basically run the function just to see what this all looks like. So, in order to do that, I'll just create a new one down here and then I'll do root equals tk dot tk. App equals initialize our cryptocurrency um, class, pass in the root, and then just root dot make loop. Uh, okay, let's just run this above first. Has no attribute to create widgets. Oh, uh, what I've noticed here is that I've put the functions on the wrong indent, so we have to back indent it once so that they're all part of the class and not part of the init class. Uh, init initializer so if we run this again what we should hopefully have oh damn we have quite a few of these instant let me just close down all of these and then uh come back to running this again so run this up and what we do get is two uh pop-ups so the loading screen's just disappeared because the data's finished downloading and then while it was doing that, it also created the main application thing where we have the label and the entry. Cool. So, so far, so good. Um, what we're going to do next is continue to code the create widgets function and just uh, finish updating it. So what we need next is after the search bar, right under it, we want what we call a list box, which will allow us to select one or multiple cryptos that we want to then track. So to do that, we create a new variable uh, or attribute to this class and then assign that to pk.listbox. 
uh, place it on self.root set select mode to multiple uh, I'm gonna go with a width of 50 to match my entry and then a height of 20 um, and then once you're basically done with that what we're going to do here is I'm going to instead of placing it right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do grid forget because what you need to remember here is that um, when we initialize the application this is going to pretty much be empty until we have the data loaded from here so in order for this to even be um, be populated we need to first uh, have that data ready and that data is being collected up here in this thread um, so that's being run entirely separate to this so when I initialize my application, I'm just going to do grid forget, which what that's going to do is it's just going to hide the um, it's going to hide the list box from the user, and then we'll basically display the um, we'll basically display this grid box later once it has been populated. Um, so where do we then display it? So we go up to the load crypto data, and then obviously over here once we have run the self dot self search uh, update search results function which is what's going to take the data from this list and update it in the list box uh, we will basically run the self dot crypto list box dot grid and this is where we give it a rule and a column so this is where we basically show it back after hiding it so i'll show you what that looks like right now let's run this up empty uh we have an empty hold on let me just close this off um run it again so over here uh we had an empty it's running too fast for now but what we did have was an empty application with no list box uh it took a second to load the data and then once the data was loaded it then showed the list box Let's see if i can get it down to take a bit longer but for some reason it's really quick at the moment uh anyway so now that that's complete uh we basically got a list box where all of our cryptos available cryptos will be shown um let's start coding the rest so we need a button right under this list box which will allow the user to then select the cryptos that they have um they want to track so i'm going to do that now so select button equals pk button self dot root text equals select cryptos and then we have to assign a command as well so i'm just for now going to assign it to select cryptos and we will just create a dummy function down here that will basically do nothing like the update search results function so sign up to cell and just pass cool so let's place this button now select button dot grid row is going to be three because we uh we have used up row two for the um crypto list box and then column's going to be zero because we want it to be aligned with the rest so once we're done with that let's create the next part which will basically show the user the selected cryptos that's going to be in a new column now so these are going to be all the cryptos that were previously selected by the user or currently selected by the user in order to track them so we'll do tk actually i'm just going to copy the um there's the tk label uh up here so i'm just going to copy that because it's going to be very similar so i'm just going to change the text of this to uh say selected cryptos and then i'll set the grid row to zero column to one because i want it to be in the first column and then I'm going to have another label as well, which basically says like a description. So the cryptos shown um, below are currently being tracked. Now I'll set this to row one because we just used up the row zero of column one. And then column is obviously going to stay as one. And padding X and Y can be the same. Uh, now, just to finish this off, like we had a select uh, list box for for the left side where we were basically selecting all the cryptos we wanted to track we need to have another list box in here which will basically show the user all the selected cryptos that they previously selected 
So to do that, we can basically uh, do the same thing that we did last time. Uh, so we'll do self dot selected cryptos list box equals tk dot list box self dot root select mode equals multiple because we want the user to be able to select multiple things. And the reason we're doing a select uh, multiple things or even a list box is so the user can delete the cryptos being tracked later on if they wanted to and then i'm going to assign a width of 50 and height of 20 just like the other one then we just place it and so the selected crypto list box dot grid row equals two column equals one tedx equals five um and the reason why we are placing it straight away instead of hiding it is because this data will be loaded straight from a csv file once we code that function up and that's really quick it won't really take any time at all um, or it will take very little amount of time so it doesn't really need to be um hidden and then show if you wanted to you could but um this will be really quick operation so let's not complicate this now, um, obviously, once this has been created, we want to populate this list box with all the cryptos that the user previously selected. So we'll have a function later on called load selected cryptos, and that's what we're going to be coding later on. So I will have another function here, load selected cryptos for itself, and just pass for now. Uh, what that's going to do is basically load up all the uh, cryptos that were previously selected and stuff so that's basically um another part of the ui done now let's create the delete button and the track button and that's basically going to be all of our widgets done so we'll do for the delete button the new button pretty much the same so just um just the text that will change in the function uh command equals so dot delete selected cryptos and once again we need another dummy function somewhere around here delete selected cryptos uh oh don't know why i did that and then we need to place it using the grid so dot grid row equals four column equals one and padding y equals five uh and then we need to also create the track button obviously the track button will be on top of the delete button so that's why i use row equals four so we'll do self dot track button equals tk dot button self dot root text equals track cryptos command equals self dot track cryptos and then we'll do state equals normal because we want the button to be enabled and not disabled. Um, then we can do self dot track button dot grid, which will place it on the grid. Row equals three, column equals one, add y equals five. Cool. So that's basically handled everything. I just need another dummy function for track cryptos, which will basically look at all the selected cryptos and then track them in a new sort of window. So we'll copy that and then do a new definition for track cryptos. cryptos. Cool. So this should basically give us a clean looking UI with everything that we need. Let's just have a look. And it does. So we basically have a clean looking UI with everything that we need. So essentially what we need to happen now is for this to actually be functional and uh, we need to code up all the functions that we said we would basically create so in order to do this uh you guys will have to stick around for the next tutorial which will i will hopefully post before the uh before the next week or around saturday so um i hope you have once again enjoyed watching this tutorial and learned something new um if you guys have any questions or ideas as usual please leave them in the comments uh, guys, please subscribe to the channel and help me reach my target of 100,000. Um, I know it's quite far from here, but if everyone subscribes, it'll be really easy. And I'll see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace.